right, so some of you may be wondering, how do I put on tech? Maybe you're not wondering at all. That's okay. Don't watch. But for those that are curious, let's, uh, let's give it a shot. All right, so those of you that wear clone armor, you know you got to have an undersuit. Uh, typically, most of us will get something like Under Armour or a cheaper version on Amazon. They're like $20 for the top, $20 for the pants. Um, when I first submitted tech for approval, I was denied basically for one of the items, the pants were too tight. They were the typical tight spandex. Tech's pants are a little bit baggy. Uh, when you look at the show, it's a little bit baggier than most, maybe because he's technically thinner than most clones. I don't know. So I found uh, a pair of pants made by Under Armour and they're, they're called hybrids. So they're still tight on the calves, but a little bit loose on, on the thigh. And then one thing too that I do, uh, this piece of Velcro, it's just stuck right there. That's gonna hold the right gauntlet. And then also, if you can see here, piece of Velcro, that's gonna hold the knees in place and I have one on each knee. That's it, really simple. So knees are the first thing that go on. I have them labeled on the inside, right and left, just a good idea to do. Slide them on and I attach the back of the knee with some Velcro to the pants. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna put on are the shins and then my boots. Uh, like most clone armor that uses ABS vacuum formed kits, uh, there's a seam on the inside and that's actually pretty smart. And you can have a seam on the inside, it's quite acceptable uh, because most of the leg will look like it's a solid piece. Um, the difference with that and this is that that material bends easily and 3D filament doesn't. Uh, the only other option was to have seams on both sides because there is no bending involved and you have to have magnets. I didn't want magnets. I didn't want a seam on the outside because the character doesn't display that on the outside. So I messed with the SDL files and combined them. And uh, so this is actually two prints that I end up um, fusing together and then finishing it so you can't tell that it's two different pieces. The spat is also separated. Uh, I basically sliced the STL file here, reprinted that lower portion, and just slid it in and glued it in. And now Tech has a shin with some spats. So I'll slide these on just like a boot, and my foot comes through, and then actually put the boots on next. Cool? All right, so I slid on the diaper next, as you can tell. Um, it's a little tricky, but it's not too bad. I basically just kind of put my legs together, step into the diaper because it's one solid piece um, and then uh, shimmy it up and then we're good. Uh, the, the next thing I do is also these little leg straps. No big deal. Um, you don't want to make them too tight because I will be bending back and forth kind of putting things on. Um, it's good to have this particular costume at least for me an extra person so in a little bit I'll have some help. Can I get some? Yes. Awesome. I'm gonna get some help. And, uh, and then they'll kind of make everything buttoned up and look really good. All right. All right, so the next piece, I always screw this up because I'll start putting on the, the top part without putting this on. Uh, this is basically going to give me that look that it's a suit with actually a turtleneck type look. Um, what's really cool is that this is going to hold up not only my biceps, but also my shoulders with this Velcro. I modified it a little bit. Um, actually, these were a little too long for what I needed. So I brought them up and then just kind of sewed them without really cutting the material. Uh, and it's hidden underneath the shoulder, so it's no big deal. Uh, this I actually got from Kevin Weir's clone kit. I don't think he sells this anymore. I want to say um, if you follow Jedi Closet, she makes these now. And she made also that really cool Mando kit, at least the, um, the undersuit and, and, uh, and that really cool poncho. So she's incredible seamstress, uh, designer, creator, maker. And so I'm gonna put this on. And, but before I do, I need to attach my bicep. So this is my left bicep. Again, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but the leather I got from Delta Leatherworks, incredible, incredible. Um, really fast service too. They respond quickly and, uh, and they're just great. So I attach them like so. And I know it's just right because the bottom where it's gonna hang a little bit. Um, you'll, you won't see any Velcro. It'll look just like that. Let's see, ta-da. And I'll do the same on the other side. That's the left. Again, I mark them, even though I kind of know 
um, which pouches go on what arm. I just still mark them because you don't want to make any mistakes and not look right when you're trooping. When you're in front of people, especially when they spot you and they're like, wait, isn't that supposed to be on that other side? That's like the worst. Um, okay. And then to put these on, slide my arm through like so. And then I attach the neck next, like so. So ultimately it looks like this, like this, right? And then you gotta spin it around so the bicep looks right, shoulders look right. And starting to kind of look like tech more and more. All right, so this is a complicated and heavy piece. Uh, there's a lot going on here. What I'm gonna do is first kind of show you, walk you through it, and then I'll show you what it's like to wear just the back, and then I'll attach the front, and then we'll keep going from there. Um, so this is uh, the back. If you look at these leather pieces here, when you first see the Bad Batch in their own show, uh, technically, Tech has a leather piece that runs all the way across the lower back. But I have a screenshot from when they first appear in the Clone Wars. And these pieces actually stop right here. So uh, that's all I had to go off of is some original designs where he's wearing his backpack. And then the show, when the, uh, I could get a screenshot, screen grab, I noticed this part. So I, that's why I stopped it. But there might be some people that actually make it all the way across. And honestly, most people, most of the files that are available um, have some open areas right here to allow the backpack to attach. I was really trying to go for a look where I could remove the backpack and it looks like I'm walking around without the backpack and there's nothing that looks off. It's just like the show. Uh, so there's nothing on the back and the backpack will attach because I have these big heavy magnets. These things are solid and I'll show you what that looks like uh, in the next clip. But um, the front basically attaches um, a little bit of help from this leather strap with Velcro on the back. There's all kinds of crazy stuff going on in the inside. You see these straps hanging? That, those straps, I'll show you in a little bit, but those straps, that's what holds all the weight and keeps the backpack from detaching the front and the back of this and it all falling apart. These straps are huge, all right? So they're not pretty. It's gonna look ugly on the inside, but honestly, it doesn't matter what it looks like on the inside. So just keep that in mind. All right. All right, so this is the back. It's super fugly. Um, I'm using these straps because, you know, I think other people with costumes that have heavy pieces and back attachments, it just seems like the, the, the right thing to do. Uh, it's a backpack concept. So I've um, got some nylon straps, uh, rigged them up in such a way so they won't detach from the back plate. And uh, there's the Velcro to hold the leather. And these are the big magnets that I have embedded into this. As you can see, this back piece is really solid thick. This is solid um, with a heavy infill from, from the 3D print. And I basically got uh, drilled into it and shoved these big heavy, I mean, these things are solid. You, if you attach these magnets on accident to each other, it's almost impossible to pull them apart. They're that strong. And I needed four of them because the back patch, which you'll see at the end, it's pretty solid. It's gonna come here and it's gonna attach to the back. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna put this on now. And, uh, and we'll see what happens now. All right, this is kind of what I do. Yep, 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 yep. And I crisscross them like so. Again, not pretty. I don't care what it looks like. Out here, out here. Um, I kind of try to make them a little bit tight once it's on. Kind of got to feel it around. Make sure it's not too twisted. And then this piece kind of comes on the outside and hide this a little bit. Again, super not pretty. This kit is kind of fugly. Um, it's all 3D printed, and so I don't know if you noticed, but I fortified the shoulders with some ABS plastic. Uh, just buy the ABS sheets 12 by 12 from Amazon. <laughs> Um, cut them up, kind of uh, dull the edges with, uh, with a Dremel or with some sandpaper. Um, and then that's how I'm at, at kind of attaching things on the inside. So that's that. 
And then I also have these guys. These are gonna be elastic pieces that I'm gonna use. So when I put the front on, the front is gonna attach like so. In fact, let me get that right now. The front um, is also ugly. I use this giant piece of ABS plastic on the inside because this is a really thin file, but this ABS plastic shaped with a heat gun makes it perfect and sturdy and it's just right. Again, really ugly, but I have Velcro in certain areas to help the attachments work just right. Uh, the top is gonna go right here. And so I'm gonna look off to the camera to kind of see if I can get this right, but. Um, eh, on camera, 20 angles. Eh, kinda making it work a little bit as best as I can. And then I'm gonna grab this little piece here that's elastic and I have the Velcro underneath. I'm gonna attach that bad boy like so. The whole idea, and this is where I usually need help, um, is you don't want the front armor and the back armor to have this gaping side seam, which I might have here. Uh, no, it's not too bad. It could be better, it could be a little bit better. Oh, this one's a little off. Okay, so that's not too bad. Looking okay, ish. Eh. All right, getting there, getting there. All right, now I can attach the shoulder bells so this is going to go like so and i should probably get some help let me get some help take 57 <laughs> this is my beautiful bride joyful socal girl also kim my bride <laughs> um she's going to help me put these on because it's almost impossible right now this is why you need a partner all right so here we go um and uh texts are a little bit different from a typical clone most clones, those that wear the clone armor, know that the shoulder bell actually covers the top of the bicep. Not with tech. Tech's biceps are kind of uh, funky. And um, yeah, so hopefully that works. And then um, what I'll do is I'll actually, I'll actually face hers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it helps you put it the right way. <laughs> Only the best. Only the best, ladies and gentlemen. It's all good. It's all good. Thank you. How's it look? Is it even? Yeah. Even. Even? Better be. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. All right, so good progress. Um, text tools. It's got a lot of tools. It's got a lot of cool stuff. So the flashlight, I think it's called the Chewbacca light. That actually goes on the side. That's what, that's what supposedly it's called. I don't know. I don't know why. Um, spanner goes in the front uh, this guy whatever it is here I'm pretty sure this is a doohickeys for um, like a spike a data spike of some sorts I honestly don't know except for that wrench because we know he's actually used it finally in uh, in the second season and uh, so kind of just like so right oh and then uh, I'll put the blaster last in my holster. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do after the tools is put on these guys. So I'm gonna hold the sleeve like so. Ta -da. And then I have this piece of Velcro right here on my forearm. I might have mentioned it, might not have mentioned it. A Velcro here that'll attach and help hold it in place so it doesn't slide off. I also have a piece of elastic underneath um, this forearm. Gives the appearance that leather's holding it, but it's really this that's gripping the forearm. So same thing, kind of hold it, slide through, and like that. All right. I'm gonna put the gloves on after uh, the backpack and I get the helmet on, then I'll put the gloves on last. And uh, we're almost there, almost there. All right, so this is the backpack. This thing is not light. Um, it is like eight, no, actually 10 or 12 different pieces. It's a lot. Um, 
Hopefully you can't tell that it's all a bunch of different pieces. But those four magnets that I showed you on the inside of the back of the armor match right here on the inside of this backpack. Uh, inside is fugly, but outside you can't tell. And so I'm going to call for some help from my wife. Can you hold this? Thank you very much. You got it? Got it. Okay. Um, and I'm going to turn around and then just attach it like so. So she's going to line it up. It's going to slam a little bit. You're going to have to let it slam. As you can see, it's now floating and levitating magically with four massive magnets. The next thing I'm getting are the antennas. Dummy me. Um, I'm a magnet person. I didn't even think to use magnets for these things. And sure enough, at Star Wars Celebration, I stored my backpack overnight in a room that I thought was going to be safe. Came back the next morning, and one of them was busted off. So what I did is cut open the top, attach the magnets to the antennas, and now we're good to go. Um, and so this one is left. So when I turn around, that's going to be on the left. Just put it on top in that spot. Here's the right. Ta-da. And now I have my antennas. Cool. All right. Now it's time to put on the helmet and glasses. Um, so the glasses, I used to put just a simple flashlight in here. I still have a light but it's no longer a flashlight because it was like running on a triple a that would die off in a couple hours so now i have um two 20 32 cell batteries um that are lighting up juicing up a little uh led and that's wired in you won't see that part because it's inside the helmet and i got some magnets to kind of hold everything in place but here we go uh, put the helmet on get my goggles and this little LED on, like so. And uh, it's starting to look like tech a little bit, right? Just a little bit, almost there, almost there. Once the gloves come on, you know what's up. I don't know if you can hear me, probably not. Probably not. That's okay. And then remember the little LED inside my glove. Pop that on. Ugh. Cool. And then a uh, blaster. Somewhere here. Can you put that in? Because I can't see. Not not very clone-ish. <laughs> not very tech-ish, but alright. So I think I think we got it. Let me uh push this down a little bit. Give you a better look. A little bit out of focus. In focus. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We just suited tech. 